Dover Downs International Speedway has been a part of NASCAR racing since the late 60s. It's a very popular track that draws fans from all up and down the East Coast. Since 1971, NASCAR has been coming to Dover twice a year. So if you're going after the championship, remember, you'll have to contend with this place more than just once before it's all said and done. Dover is a mile-long oval with a concrete surface and tight turns. 24 degrees of banking on such tight turns really keeps the tires working very hard. Your right front in particular will take a lot of punishment, especially if you are too aggressive on those first few laps with new tires. You'll find that it pays off to be a little on the conservative side with your driving style when you're on fresh tires because once they get worn, the car can become a real handful at this place. Until you become really familiar with the track, take it easy getting back into the throttle as you exit turns two and four. The banking rolls off very quickly and that makes it really easy to smack the wall as you come off the corner. You'll notice that the transition between the banking and the apron is pretty harsh here, so be very careful when you're coming off the banking to make a pit stop. Another thing to remember about pitting here is that although Dover is a fast racetrack, it's got one of the slowest pit road speed limits around, only 35 miles per hour. That makes it very easy to speed on your way into the pits, so take the time to do some practice pit stops so that you won't get hit with a speeding penalty during the race. All right, it's time to get in the car and check out Dover. As you cross the start finish line, you're going around 160 miles an hour. Just as you approach the groove entering turn one, roll out of the throttle and smoothly transition to about one quarter brake as you work the car down toward the apron. Use the brake just long enough to scrub off some speed. About halfway through turn one, start rolling into the throttle. At the apex of one and two, you should be almost at full throttle and running about 135 or so. Through two, you're back at full throttle and your momentum will carry you out to the back straight wall. You should hit the back straight at around 150 or so. Stay at full throttle until you reach the darkened groove entering turn three. Like before, roll out of the throttle and smoothly transition to about one quarter break as you work the car down toward the apron. Again, you want to use the brake just long enough to scrub off some speed. Halfway through three, start rolling into the throttle. At the apex of three and four, you should be almost at full throttle and doing about 135. Through four, you may need to feather the throttle a little to make sure you don't get into the front straight wall as you come off the corner. As soon as you're confident that you'll make it, go to full throttle and let the car drift out to the wall. You'll hit the front straight at around 150. Keep it close to the wall as you come back to the start finish line. Let's go around one more time. Best laps here will be just under 24 seconds and again watch your throttle points as the tires wear because the corner exits can be murder here. You'll quickly discover why they call this place the Monster Mile because it's very hard on the cars and physically demanding on the drivers. Before you start complaining about how tough it is to finish 400 miles here just remember one thing it wasn't too long ago when we'd raced 500 miles at Dover so you're getting off pretty easy there, Junior. <laughs>